is going on, Gulf Coast Nation? Guys, welcome home and welcome to our home. Dom, welcome. Exciting stuff today. We are going to walk you guys through, from what I understand and search to be, one of the only, as of right now, 2022, a Tiagra 130 spooling walkthrough to show you guys what it holds, how we set it up. But before we jump into the video, very important announcement, okay? Big stuff right here in the Gulf Coast Nation house. Blaine has his own computer and he very specifically wanted me to show you guys the computer. So I'm gonna That's show you guys thing. the new Apple Mac. I7 processor? I7, what? one terabyte. All of drive. these shirts are about to get shipped in a nanosecond. Pew, right. pew, pew, pew. But let's get in the video. Woo! How's the potato soup? <laughs> Alright, so Dom bought this TIG 130 used off Facebook Marketplace. Excellent option. Absolutely love Facebook Marketplace, by the way. So he got this thing used and it came with what was told to be 200 pound braid Jerry Brown. So we kind of looked at it. It's hollow cord. It looks like Jerry Brown. And um, so what we wanted to do and what I always suggest you guys to do is if you get a used reel with braid, first kind of test it, make sure it looks good, and then go ahead and down spool it and then re-spool it. And I know that's like, oh, down spool and re-spool, are you sure? You wanna go through every single inch of this braid, make sure there's no splices, or if there are splices, you know about them. If they're bad splices, you can re-splice them. And it's not that you don't trust the person that you bought the reel from, or you think they're a bad person or whatever. It's just thorough. Be thorough with your gear. If you're gonna be fishing for big fish, you might as well know every inch of the line. So we went to j &M Tackle. I'm gonna show you guys the picture. We downspooled it with the machine, which was a lot better than Blaine and I downspooling it by hand. This is what we were going to do and what we normally do. But we also got to put a line counter on it, which was nice. So we know we have exactly 1,455 yards on this spool. So we're going to put 1,455 yards of 200 pound braid, and then we're going to put 200 pound LP mono on top. I wish we could put 200 pound tight line braids on here for Don, but we can't right now. So, but we're getting more in. So for right now, we're just gonna have to do with whatever this came with, but that's always a viable option. We pack the braid, but let's get to it. I'm gonna show you guys how we like to do our connection knot like I've done before. We've obviously ran this through our guides. We've got this on the old beef stick here just for spooling purposes, but I'm just gonna take it and I hope it shows up good. I'm gonna go once through here. It's really simple twice through here. Don't worry about slipping. I know a lot of people, everyone tells me that this knot's gonna slip or like it's gonna spin in the spool. It doesn't do that once you do it on tight. So you got two strands here and then I'm basically just gonna take it and do a very, very simple overhand knot. Now, what a lot of people like to do here is on this tag end, they tie another knot and cinch it down to the knot. But the reason I don't like doing that is because it locks. And if for any reason you hook a fish, it's gonna take you all the way down to the knot. I really don't want this knot to lock. I want it to pull out and pull off because I don't want whoever's in the harness to be with a locked up reel. That's just not a good safe option and you know in theory you should never get back to the knot. But that is in theory my folks and that's why I say in theory all the time because it's you have deniable plausibility. So two strands again, de-loop over and then just leave yourself a little tag in. If you make your tag in too long you can just go down here cinch it down kind of back and forth until you leave a little tag in, and then we're gonna let Dom jump on the harness, and then I'm gonna show you guys how you need to cinch this knot in and lock it in. All right, so as you can see, Dom's just making sure to run over that tag in each time, stop on this top side. So you can kind of see there how he is laying over that, and then we're basically just going to lay it all the way over here. Once you get to the end, you just fold it back over, and then run it back over, and that basically has, I mean, you can see here, I'm gonna grab here, and like pull the drag. And you can see that's not that's not slipping, so it holds. I promise. As you can see here, just going right back over it. So as you can see here, knots here, ran it over, flipped it over, and then ran it back over again. And like I said, it's not not going anywhere. Not slipping, but that way when you get to the bottom, and if you see this, it's not good anyway. So that's how we like to do our knots. It's a matter of opinion, but that's how we do them. Alrighty, so what we like to do now, so obviously we're going to take a piece of rebar, um, the holes on this spool are kind of small, normally we like to use a smooth bar, but it's it was too thick to fit through here, so we're using a piece of rebar, the rebar is not bad, it works good, it just kind of eats the spool up, but we're only going to use the spool one time, 
not going to be a problem. Then I'm going to sit on a towel like I'm showing you guys, put my legs on the side of the spool, put a lot of pressure because we want the braid packed on tight. Obviously, you can take this to a shop. Some shops spool it on tight enough, but we want to pack it on at home for one, to make sure it is packed on tight because we trust ourselves and you know, if we're going to fish it and we're going to yak the baits really far and then pack it on every time. What's the difference in doing it at home? Make sure your line lays good. And then number two is we want to go through every inch of this braid because it is used braid, so we want to make sure there's no imperfections in it. And at the shop, you know, it can be spooling on really fast. You might miss something. And then we're going to top it off. We're going to splice 200 pound LP mono on top right here. And then at the very end, we're going to set our drag because you always have to set your drag, your reels, when you get them in used. It's always a good idea to set up the scale or new when they come out of the box. They're not exactly, you know, at whatever the max settings are. So you want to make sure you set your drag. So we'll do that at the end too. We'll get this whole reel spooled up tight. So uh, we're going to see if we can't wreck Dom's hamstrings with how tight we're going to spool his braid on. Let's do it. Now it's smooth sailing. You can, we bring a solo cup in here in a little bit and we'll get some water, put some water on the line and put some water on the towel so the spool doesn't get hot and stick to the towel. But that's basically it. Cranker and single speed. Single speed, 1,450 yards to go. <laughs> I like to spool it, spool it. You like to spool it, spool it. He likes to spool it, spool it. We like to spool it. Cheetah body cheat. 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 Baby. Just about to finish her out here. Alright, I'll hand pull it so we don't go flying. Alright, ready for the tape? All the weights off. And that right there, folks, is 1450 yards. So see if we can get like a little that's about how deep it is. So you've got a good bit of distance for 200 pound mono or even 250 mono for the South Florida guys. So let's set the drag first. So we like to set the drag, set the drag here one so we don't stretch our mono but two so it's like a little bit closer to our dropping distance because you know as the spool gets lower the drag increases so give us a better idea. Alright so Dom and I just set the drag out in the living room there and basically the basic rundown of setting your drag is always put your reel in free spool before you mess with your presets. And then basically you just turn your preset righty tighty, tightened, and then you go to strike, you pull it with a certified pull scale. So this is what we use right here off Amazon, it's a little digital scale, it goes to like 660 pounds, so you're not going to max it out. And then if you don't like it, if it's too low, obviously go back down, tighten it more. If it's too high, go back down to, to free spool, loosen it until you find that perfect. You know, we put our strike here, about 60 pounds of drag, this got 80 pounds at full, and then the kind of trick that we've had, I've used TIGs before and I didn't like them for one reason, one reason only. They don't set well, which is what I mean. Set well is when you drop your bait, you set your weight, you want that drag to be just like, just enough to come off where the waves won't pull it, but a shark picks it up, you won't feel any weight. And the Tiagras, when you set them at your strike setting, is like really loose and free spool, but right out of free spool is like, really really hard so what we'd have to do is we put them in free spool we count like 38 40 clicks up and set it in free spool or 38 40 clicks down and then set it on a really loose drag system but Dom and I have just engineered an idea and basically what it is is you can either make a mark on your preset knob and make a mark on your like side plate here but there's already a mark luckily on our preset knob and so what we did was basically know this mark facing back towards this screw, real complicated stuff here, is our strike setting and then when Dom wants to set his bait he's going to back the preset way down making sure that that mark doesn't make a complete circle and then now if he backs it all the way over here puts it up barely like he can put it half strike and the drag is really loose so he can go up a little bit more and he has this whole range here to find the perfect setting and then when he gets his run he's going to back it down in the free spool take that mark back to his screw in line and he is ready to go to strike or apparently full give the beans and then be ready to go so if you get a tiger 130 it's not setting right maybe that's something you can do find your strike setting make a mark make a mark on your side plate and then you know know that's where it is 
back it all the way down in free spool, have this whole cam to set your baits good, and then when it's time to give the beans, crank your preset back to your mark, give the beans. So we're gonna top this thing up with some 200 pound mono. Did you get about that neck? <laughs> <coughs> don't want to <coughs> lose the very first fish. <laughs> Can you break that drag down for me and put me some slack? Is there an issue with that prior to this? If you cut the clip on, just put it in free spool. Yeah, it is. So. Alright, so all we're doing here, I'm not going to walk in through it too much, but we're just doing a holocore splice, 200 braid to 200 pound mono with a holocore needle. So as you can see, I don't know how well you can see, but it goes straight in the middle right there and then we're going to do about a 15 20 foot section most people say you only need like 5 10 feet but why not take an extra five minutes and do a longer splice just to make sure she holds and then i'll show you guys the finish or not it's basically a glorified fg at the end to make sure it all stays together so we've got our splice done it's about two fathoms or so so long enough for sure and then you can kind of see right here i don't know how well it's gonna see if i can get it to focus you can see right here where the braid kind of meets the mono. The mono runs inside of the braid, hence holocore. And then I'm going to make sure all the slacks out of this holocore splice go all the way down to where it meets right here. And then, all right, so right here you got the end of your holocore splice. As you can see, mono runs right straight through. And just for a little finisher here, I know some people just like splice right into the end and super glue it, but this can't hurt either. I'm just going to do some lazy wraps down my mono, get it about two and a half, three inches or so. And then at the end, I'm gonna start wrapping it tight together. And then when you start your splice, obviously leave yourself a good tag in. And then once you get it about two or three inches, you wrap tight at the bottom, just take your first over wrap and then work your way all the way back up, making sure everything's tight as you're wrapping it and everything's laying side by side so the knot looks nice and neat Basically what this does is, it's the uh, same principle as braid digging on braid, kind of like the same thing the FG, the FG likes to squeeze onto the mono, so this braid going down, braid going back up, the braid kind of locks into itself and it squeezes on the mono, obviously this isn't holding your entire knot, that's what the holocore splice is for, and that's why this just needs to be tight and thorough, but it just holds your holocore splice from slipping. I go over the splice a couple times here just to make sure because sometimes when you let it go it likes to unravel. So I'm going to want it tight and then I'm just going to do a couple half hitches. When you do your half hitches, you go one over, one under. Why don't you just wait for this to get cut off? Alright. Shut up, Blaine. So right here, <laughs> right here you can see just the finish knot. I just did probably four or five half hitches and then a finish knot at the top. And then you just got your braid thing, and that just holds your holocore splice, like I said. So we're going to take our 200-pound mono, top it up, and then we'll be ready to go. So we'll see how much 200-pound mono we can pack on. Get the old LP spools here. 200-pound mono coming off. 200-pound mono going on. You got a lot of room in there for mono, which is nice. It's nice to have a nice top shot. Blue looks good. Yeah, it really doesn't look bad at all. No, yeah, it's good, man. All right, Dom. Hold her still for me right there. Oh, yeah. She looks good. She's packed up. It's got a little bit of room for air, but a really good top shot on there. You know what color mono top shot would really look good on there? Black LP. Yep. LP. Come out with black mono again, please. All right, well, we've got the TIG 130, 1,455 yards of braid, 200 pound braid, with probably 150 yards-ish, 100 yards of mono, so it's got a good mono top shot. It's definitely got room. If we go to South Florida, we'll put 250 pound mono on there, so that'll be nice as well. 60 pounds at strike, 
80 pounds at full. We found a spot on there where, you know, you can put 40 pounds of drag. Probably that's what we'll start off with when you hit strike. Because that's semi-comfortable to hold. And then if we need to, you got all the beans to be given with this reel. Monster capacity. And then, if you didn't, for some reason, you skipped right to the end and you didn't see where we talked about setting it and all the problems we had with the TIG and the solution we just came up with, it's genius to go back and watch. But it sets perfect now, and it's ready to rock and roll. It's ready to hit the beach. Yep. It's January right now. February. First day of February, but winter time here in the Panhandle. So I think soon, maybe the first shark you can break it in on will be a giant mako. Hopefully, we'll see. So hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. I hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up, drop a comment below, share with your friends, go ahead and subscribe. And as always, we'll catch you guys in just a couple days. You.